everyone would make their way in, and if you'd stand with me as we sing, the church is one foundation. we open the service as well. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to come here and to witness these baptisms tonight. We've been looking forward to this for quite a while. We thank you for that. But also, we thank you for the many people in our church who serve. We think of Matt Carr as he serves our community here in Creston as a police officer, and we thank you for that service. We thank you that... Um, we, we just have that testimony from our church, but also uh, for his um, faith in you and how he shows people in the community that. Um, we think of Morgan Johnston up, in, up at Iowa State. Uh, we pray for her as uh, she has many studies up there, but also we just pray for her testimony as well and um, that she would make wise choices up there at school we look and for witnessing opportunities as well but most of all making good friends and good choices with her studies um, we thank you for the ministry she's able to be involved with up there we think of the stokers as they're in retirement we thank you for their many years of service um, on the mission field and um, now in retirement and the many difficulties of just uh, this body growing older uh, we know they've they've battled COVID this last year, and um, he's had some pretty big um, issues with recovering from that. But most of all, as they um, try and find where they're at um, with uh, serving where they're at and with limitations and things like that, um, I pray that they would be encouraged. I pray that we would encourage them um, as we have opportunity as well. We thank you once again that we're able to witness these baptisms tonight 
And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we are thankful for the opportunity tonight to be able to uh, rejoice with these young people and uh, rejoice with the opportunities that God is do, do what God is doing in their lives. And um, and like you said uh, a couple weeks ago, when Ryan Fields got baptized, uh, we ha had uh, several that came through the the baptism class, and then um, had a little bit of a stint with. Uh, the holidays and COVID and the rest. And, and so we're back around to being able to walk through uh, this time with these young people. And so we're looking forward to that opportunity uh, here tonight. So if I could have uh, Wesley Wires, Haley Lawfer, Olivia Miller, Gabe Lawfer, Tyler Travis, and Aaliyah Bowles, uh, come on up and join me up here to my left if you can. I just want to let you know as a congregation that it's been a joy to work with these young people and to um, watch them grow in Christ and uh, be able to take that opportunity to walk through um, the baptism class with them and uh, hear them. Uh, go ahead and share their testimonies uh, uh, by way of their uh, deacon interviews. And um, it's just been encouraging to be able to see them uh, grow through this process as well. You know, what we are doing tonight is not just optional for the church. It's not just an option. Uh, it's actually commanded, and it's actually modeled for us in the beginnings of the church. One of our key verses in the baptism class was Acts chapter 2 and verse number 40, which, 41, which says, um, And those who gladly accepted the message were baptized, and there were about 3,000 souls added to their number that day. And so uh, we may not have the number 3,000, but we have six that have uh, trusted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and their desire is to follow the Lord in believer's baptism. And so tonight, we will have that opportunity to hear their testimonies, um, affirm that uh, by way of our vote to proceed with baptism, and then uh, watch them uh, walk through the waters of believers' baptism, and then receive them into membership at a short members' meeting that we'll have at the end of the service here tonight. So with those things in our minds, and with the gospel uh, being uh, put on display here tonight by way of a visual representation of the gospel, uh, when it comes to young people going through the waters of believers' baptism, that Christ died and was buried and rose again. Uh, I'm going to have them come and share their, uh, their conversion story with you. Um, and um, we're just going to kind of all hang out up here together here for a little while and let you hear from them. And so I've asked Wesley to share first here. And so um, we'll go ahead and let Wesley Wires uh, share with you at this time. I was told I should make this brief. I don't know if I should. I don't think it's this long. <laughs> Sorry. I was seven years old when I got saved. It was a Wednesday night at Awana where I was listening to the teacher talk about how to be saved. Yeah, sorry. She told us how Jesus came down to earth and died for our sins. I heard the story before but never actually believed it. But when she said he died for us so we couldn't go to hell, where we would spend eternally, eternity for unbelievers, I wanted no part of that. I talked to my teacher afterwards and she said, when I went home, I should ask Christ to be my personal Lord and Savior, which I did because I know he died for me and saved me from my sins. And later, where I learned where we could be judged when we die, I wanted to hear, good job or a well done. I got a lot from Willie and Dave the last couple of days where they talked about love and patience, and patience is the only one that, the only one thing that I probably need to work on. I am always getting mad at my sister's for little things, who knew? <laughs> I need, I need, I probably need to use my patience at home and doing things. My verse of encouragement is John three sixteen and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have only lasting life. For God, for, yes. for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. Amen. Amen. Thanks for sharing there, Wesley. Appreciate it very much. Okay. Uh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Just to kind of stay in the huddle here. That, that'd be great. All right. Let's hear from uh, Haley Lawfer, if we can. Here, all right. There you are, Haley. I was in church one morning, and the pastor was talking about what would happen if you were to die today. And I thought to myself, if I was to die today, where would I go, go to heaven or hell? So we went home 
that morning, and I asked Mom what it meant to be saved. So we went back into her room, and she told, told me what it meant to be, what it meant. And I prayed and asked Christ to be my Savior. And what, and the verse that encouraged me is Ephesians two, four through five. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of all, because of His great love, with which He loved us, even even when we were dead in his trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Haley. Make sure I get them in the order I told them. Olivia, you're up next here. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and have your share. Okay. When I was 10 years old, I was lying in bed thinking about what would happen if the rapture came. I thought to myself, I hope my siblings are saved so they'll go to heaven. Then I started thinking, was I saved? Will I go to heaven? The answer was no. My whole life I had known about salvation, but never thought about taking the next step of having salvation and faith in the Lord. That night I repented and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and started living for him. My verse of encouragement is 1 John 2.12. I'm writing to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven for his name's sake. Amen. Amen. Tell, tell them why that verse was, uh, became your... Uh... Your, your verse of assurance or your verse of encouragement. I like because it says um, your sins are forgiven for his name's sake, not because of you, but because of him. It's not like I can forgive my own sins. God, God's the only one who can forgive my sins because he died Amen. on the cross. Amen. Thanks, Olivia. I appreciate it very much. Amen. Amen. Then we'll have uh, Gabe Waffer. Come on up and share with us here, Gabe. I was in church and the passage was out the rat about the rapture and the question that was asked was where would you go when you die and i thought about and i thought to myself where would i go um later in my uh sunday school class they talked about jesus dying on the cross and shedding his blood uh for our sins and i thought about that a lot and i uh, went in a private place and asked him to save me from my sins and my verse of encouragement was John 10, 28. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. Amen. Amen. Thanks for sharing that, Gabe. Great, great verse of assurance there, too. Yep. I think Ryan shared that one with us as well. Yep. All right, Tyler, go ahead. Uh, when, <clears throat> when I was younger, we were in uh, Wednesday Church, Awana, and they were talking about how to get saved and what it means. And later that night while we were eating, I asked my mom and dad what it meant to be saved. And uh, they told me about it. And uh, me and my dad went into my room, and uh, uh, I realized that I was a sinner and that he died on the cross for our sins. And uh, that is the only way that can get us into heaven. And uh, the verse that encouraged me was John 14, 6. Uh, and Jesus said to them, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. Amen. Thanks for sharing there, Tyler. Appreciate it very much, bud. All right, and Leah Bowles here, I uh, want to share with you as well, yeah? Um, my testimony is that one fall night two years ago, I was sitting in my room thinking through just in my life, what, what have I done? What has truly led me up to this point? And I had been, I had known about Christ my entire life. I've been going to church since I was little, and my family was always telling me about it. They did not have the right idea of Christ, and when I came here, I was a little bit confused on how, how um, Christ really was. And so, I, while I was digging deeper, and knowing this, you people have helped me to come to know Christ and telling me on how to be saved and how it all works. And I thank you so much for that. My verse of assurance is Romans 4, 7 and 8. How joyful are those whose lawless acts are forgiven and those whose sins are covered. How joyful is the man the Lord will never charge with sin. Amen. Amen. Very good. You guys can have a seat right there with Jeannie if you want to. Um, and we're going to uh, have a short time of uh, voting here. So you've heard the conversion stories from these young people, um, uh, how they trusted Christ. I'm going to have to go back and watch the sermon on the rapture um, there um, and uh, see if that was me or Pastor Dan, one of the two of us there uh, on that one. 
Um, but uh, I'm thankful for how God uses the Word of God, uses parents pouring the gospel into their children, uses our, our, our side ministries of Awana and FBC Kids and Sunday School to reiterate the gospel, to continue to, to show kids um, that, is, that is trust in Christ is, is what is needed. And so uh, we'd like to go ahead and uh, proceed here with uh, their baptisms here tonight, but we want that to be a congregational decision and not just a select few. So we'll just take them one at a time here if we can, and, uh, and so uh, we'll mar- march through these here as, uh, as quickly or as easily as we can. Not as quickly as we can, as easily as we can. So based on credible testimony of the gospel, of his conversion to Jesus Christ, and with recommendation from the church's leadership, would there be a motion then to proceed with believer's baptism for Wesley Wires? Joel Wires giving the first, uh, Zach Saylor and Gordon Bolton giving the second. Any questions? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. And that carries. And then based on her credible testimony of uh, conversion to Jesus Christ and with the recommendation of the church's leadership, would there be a motion then to proceed with believer's baptism for Haley Lawfer? I'm seeing it's Kim. Sorry, I got to get which black coat is going up there. Kim's Kim Lawfer and then Miss Dillinger and uh, Faith or not uh, Vanessa Miller giving the second there. Any questions there? All in favor, then please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. And that carries. And then based on her credible testimony of conversion to Christ and with recommendation of our church's leadership, uh, who would be able to proceed with giving a motion for believers' baptism for Olivia Miller? Uh, Tone Gates and Biz Gates and Mary Sue Lewis giving the second there. Uh, any questions? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. And that carries. And here, based on uh, credible gospel testimony to conversion to Christ, and with the recommendation of our church's leadership, would there be a motion to proceed with believer's baptism for Gabe Lawfer? Uh, Travis Miller, and then Jerry Buchanan, giving the second there, and a couple others there I saw as well. Any questions? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. And that carries. And then based on his uh, credible testimony of conversion to Christ and with the recommendation of the church's leadership, would there be a motion then to proceed with believer's baptism for Tyler Travis? Bruce Travis giving the motion, and then Wayne Miller giving the second. Any questions? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. And that carries. And then based on her credible testimony of the gospel and conversion to Jesus Christ, and with the recommendation of the church's leadership, uh, who would be able to give a motion then to proceed with believer's baptism for Aaliyah Bowles? Vanessa Miller giving the first there. Biz Gates and Carmen Dahl giving the second. Any questions there? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. And that carries. Well, let me lead us in a word of prayer, and then I'll dismiss the uh, young people to the back there, and we'll get ready to go ahead and proceed uh, here this evening. Father, we thank you for the power of the gospel that it is able to save. And Lord, just as we were reminded by some of the kids' testimonies, we could not save ourselves. There was no way we could forgive our own sins. But you came and you gave yourself on the cross of Calvary, bearing our sin on the cross so that we might have new life in him. And Lord, even as we take time here tonight to rejoice in that through the waters of believers' baptism, I pray that you'll help these kids to remember that you have saved them and now they're giving a testimony of desiring to follow you. And we thank you and praise you for these things in Christ's name. Amen. Pastor Dan and Jake, you can come on up. Jake uh, Hemsworth, you want to come on up? We can head on back, guys. So some are 
joining our church through the waters of baptism. They are identifying with Christ through his death, burial, and resurrection through the waters of baptism. That's where the gospel goes visible or it goes public. And uh, we also recognize, maybe a little bit different than the first century, uh, although people did move at, uh, infrequently in the first century, in the 21st century, people move a lot more often. And so there are some times when people move away and they become members of other churches, and they go and they share their conversion story, and another church welcomes them into their church family by way of voting, like we did tonight. Um, you know, I have a non-member sitting beside me saying I every time, all right? And he thinks he has the privilege of that. He doesn't yet, uh, but someday he may. Um, but Jake, you know, sometimes they move away and sometimes they move back. And so uh, we're thankful for that. And so Jake has already done this in the past. However, some of you weren't here or maybe you don't even remember his conversion story. And so it's important for you to hear that again as we uh, vote to receive him back in the membership a little bit later on tonight. But he'd love to share his conversion story with you. Hey, so I'm obviously Jacob Hemsworth. I grew up in Minnesota. Um, my dad was a pastor, so I heard the gospel my entire life. Um, and God started to work in my my heart, uh, my sisters, they uh, were diligent to remind me how I needed to be saved, and uh, I, I just pushed them away and, you know, ignored it, and, uh, but God started to bring conviction into my heart, and uh, we were on family vacation at my grandparents, and I got in trouble, and I got disciplined, and Dad walked me through Romans Road and uh, asked me if I wanted to get saved, and I... I said yes, and I understood the gospel through the APCs of salvation. You accept, you know, that you're a sinner, and there's no possible way that you can make it to heaven on your own. Uh, and you, you conf or you believe, <laughs> you believe and believe that Jesus, you know, is your Savior and died on the cross, and He's the only possible way that you can get to heaven. And then you confess which is repentance, which is a change of mind, which leads to a change of direction. Um, and that's what salvation is. It's putting your faith uh, in Jesus Christ. Um, so, and then when I was 10, I was baptized in my church in Minnesota. Um, so, now I'm married, and we're looking forward to just getting to know you guys more as adults. <laughs> and <laughs> it changes. And serving you guys, you know, serving Christ and serving others. So. so Jake and his family moved here what year? It was 2015. 2015, and he came as a junior or sophomore in high school? Sure. <laughs> One of those years. All right. Well, he was homeschooled, all right? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have a good time with that sometimes. Uh, so he came here. And he is, I mean, he's being honest to get to know you now as an, as an adult. It's just encouraging to see how God is choosing to work in, in Jake's life and in Miriam's life. And so we're thankful to be able to have you a part of our church family again. Thank, thank you. you. Well, we were waiting for those doors to open, and they have not yet. And so we're going to sing another song together.
and healing? Is it your desire to obey God's command and be baptized and to live a life that's pleasing to God? And Haley, based on your testimony of faith and trust in Jesus Christ and your desire to follow Christ in obedience by way of believers baptism, it's my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Buried with him in the likeness of his death and raised to new life in the likeness of his resurrection. Amen. Amen.
I was telling them ahead of time that uh, it seems like as our last couple of baptism services have come up, I've either been sick or down with COVID or whatever, and Pastor Dan's uh, graciously filled in for me. I'm a little bit out of practice, I have to apologize to Gabe a little bit later here because I did not give him a chance to get a breath. <laughs> so, you may have heard him choking a little bit. <laughs> I will apologize to him later and we'll try to get back into the rhythm of these things here in the weeks to come. We are going to offer the baptism class again. We have several young people that have been asking questions about baptism, even as we've been ramping up to this service. And so if you're one here who is here tonight, does not know Christ as your or knows Christ as your Savior, knows Christ as your Savior, and has not followed the Lord and believers baptism, we would invite you to, to talk to one of us and let one of us know, and we can walk through those materials and uh, even prepare you for a time of giving the exact same testimony here tonight and following the Lord and believers baptism. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you again for each of these young people and um, the opportunity we have as a church to, to see uh, young people being brought up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. But no more than that, Lord, uh, each of them having the opportunity to, um, to know and understand the gospel and to live, live that on display here tonight as uh, following you and your command to be baptized. And we thank you for these things in Christ's name. Encouraging. Uh, we, we think about the truths of Scripture, and we think about even the text that we've been memorizing together, John 15. You are already clean through the word which I have spoken to you. Is it that water that cleanses us? Is it that water that cleanses us? It's not that water. That's Creston water. All right? It doesn't cleanse us. Now, it may in your shower with some soap and that type of stuff, uh, you know, that's great. But it doesn't cleanse us of our sin. What is Jesus saying in John 15? You are already clean through the word which I have spoken to you. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. It is the word of God that creates what it commands. It's the word of God through which we are given life. First Peter, uh, it's chapter 1, 2, or 3. You're born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible through the word of God. James 1, of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth. We see it also again in John 15. You did not choose me, but I chose you. It's not of you. It's not of me. It's not of any religious act. It is through the regenerating power of the Holy Spirit through the convicting truth of the Word of God that sinners are saved. So what is Jesus getting at then in John 15? You are already clean through the Word which I have spoken to you. Remember when Jesus was going to wash Peter's feet and Peter says, you're not washing my feet. And Jesus says, if I don't wash you, you have no part with me. And he uses the same idea there of being clean. You are already clean, except your feet need to be cleansed because of sin as you walk through this life. So we are already in Christ, but not yet do we perfectly reflect Christ. And so when we're thinking about John 15, you're already clean through the word. We are to become what we already are. In the waters of baptism, we are declaring who we already are in Jesus Christ. We're identifying with Christ. And in John 15, as we abide in him, we are becoming who we already are. Become who you are in Christ, our identity in Christ. I've chosen you. Our identity in him is then evidenced through a life of fruitfulness, through a life of abiding in him, through a life of walking with him, through uh, fruitfulness and faithfulness. And so we're going to be praying about some of those things tonight, even in, in regard to Christians in the Ukraine. And we think about John 15 and fruitfulness and faithfulness as we abide with Christ, as we uh, submit to him and his word, as we trust him and rely upon him. So let's quote that text together. If you're with us tonight or as a visitor, you can just listen along. We were working at memorizing John 15 uh, verses 1 through. How far are we going? I think we're not going through 21, I don't think. 1 through 17, I think. Somewhere in there, all right? That's, that will be all the way in uh, December. We'll get to that far. All right, but we're only verses 1 through 4, so let's quote it together. We'll start with a reference and then with a reference. Uh, 
John 15, 1 through 4. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. John 15, 1 through 4. So we see there our identity in Christ. I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit. We see our identity, and we see that that identity as we abide in him is evidenced in fruitfulness and faithfulness. And you know one of those main ways that that fruitfulness is evidenced? It's with one another. You think about all of the one another new commands of the New Testament. It's not just one another in general, but it's one another in a context of those who have covenanted together, covenanted together to walk in obedience and submission to the Word. Now, did you notice the first song we sing tonight? The church is one foundation. Did you catch a phrase in the last, uh, the last verse that said something like this, mystic sweet communion? Did you wonder what that was? Did that cross your mind at all about what is mystic sweet communion? Well, it's John 15. It's abiding in the word. It's abiding in Christ, even in the midst, even in the midst of difficulties, even in the midst of persecution, even in the midst of ridicule. So let's spend a few moments tonight praying for believers in Ukraine. How could we pray for them? Does John 15 lead us to pray that the problems will just go away? You know, that's the way I want to pray. I really do. I, I, I love comfort. How would John 15 lead us to pray? Well, we can pray for their protection. You know, many of them are probably fearful. Many of them are probably confused. Peter, writing to believers who are in a similar scenario of persecution, talks about how God uses persecution to burn away all of the false hopes and distractions of this life. And so we can pray that they would find their hope in Jesus and not in their circumstances, not in their shaping influences. And then we can also pray that they would have strength and wisdom to serve the church, to serve one another, and to serve those who don't know Christ so that the gospel would shine brightly. What an, what an opportunity. You know, I, 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 I don't know what that looks like. I don't know what that means because I've never been in a circumstance like that. I think for me to stand here and say, oh, I would do well, I have no idea. Or I would do poorly. I, I, I don't know. But God does give us the opportunity to intercede on behalf of others. So we're going to pray for them. So I'd like to have uh, uh, someone here tonight that would be willing to lead us in prayer for them. And you can pray about a few of those things. And then just wanted to uh, give you uh, a short update. You heard a little bit from Wes uh, about the winter escape. We are able to go up to camp. And uh, some of you that are at family camp this summer, you will be receiving a blessing that we provided for you. And it'll be a blessing that will come down the road. Um, we split and stacked wood for two and a half hours or so. There are huge oak trees that came from McIntosh State Park. They have actually uh, given a, a great blessing to the camp and brought over some big logs. And so they were guys that were, that were down there cutting them up and we split them and we stacked them. And I don't know, I, I'm, I, I don't know exactly how to measure cord of wood. But I'm just guessing we cut and stacked somewhere between zero to 100 cord of wood. Somewhere in there, all right? It was a lot. And, um, you know, the older I get, uh, the, the, the more difficult some of that work becomes. You, you guys that have 
cut wood and split wood and stacked wood know that that's like roofing, uh, putting on a new roof or a te a tearing off a roof. You know it's like pouring concrete. It's one of those jobs that you like the younger guys to do. And uh, so we had a bunch of, of high schoolers that were helping and serving in that way. And then some others were working in the rock. And uh, they weren't doing maybe a bunch of detailed work by way of skilled work, but they were doing detailed and skilled work by way of cleaning up some of the uh, leftover construction in the process and, and serving in that capacity. And uh, Willie and Dave did a great job of encouraging us and reminding us uh, especially that our one anothering, that was our theme over the weekend, our one anothering actually comes out of our identity in Jesus. Become who you are in Christ. And so to love one another is actually evidencing who we are in Christ. And so uh, just so thankful for how God chose to work in that and so thankful to bless some of you uh, and to bless our junior girls and our junior boys. They use that wood. And uh, there was... A little bit ironic as well, and I didn't get, uh, we didn't really interact with this group, but there was a group of Ukrainian, uh, a group from a, I don't know if it was just one church or a few churches from Minnesota that have, um, what, what do you, how do you call that, where they come from one country and they go to the other one? Thank you. Uh, they immigrated, uh, and, and so they have relatives that are over in the Ukraine, and they were actually at camp this weekend, and, uh, just interesting to see and, and to recognize how God is choosing to build his church all over the world. So who would lead us in prayer as we pray for the Ukrainian Christians? And you can at the same time just thank the Lord for choosing to give us a great weekend, a camp, and to be encouraged through the teaching of God's word. Who'd be willing to lead us tonight? All right. Thank you, Travis. Father, we do come to you now, and we think of our brothers and sisters in Ukraine, and Lord, our hearts are um, our burden for them, Lord. We, we see the images, and we hear the stories, and uh, Lord, by, by your grace, it is, it is a gift that we are not even experiencing that here, Lord. And so we lift them up to you, and we do think of uh, our passage from John 15, and Lord, we pray that they would abide in you, that by your grace they would lay their cares on you, they would lay your, their worries on you, that they would run to you for strength, knowing, Lord, that you are uh, our high tower, you are our refuge, you are our rock. And, Lord, we pray even now that you would bring those scriptures to their minds, that through your word you would bring them peace, your peace that passes all understanding, that your peace would guard their hearts and minds, and that, Lord, we would see also our need to run to you for peace, for comfort, for real perspective in this, in this life, in this world, Lord, remembering that we are, um, we are foreigners, Lord, that this is not our home, but that while we are here, as Pastor Dan reminded us, Lord, that we are an outpost for you. And so, Lord, I do pray for their protection, Lord, and I do pray for their comfort. And, Lord, I pray that we would be faithful to lift them up in prayer, knowing that you are the giver of all good gifts and that you are truly in control and that nothing is outside of your command. And so, Lord, we praise you for your might and for your power. Lord, help us to rest also in your plan. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, we're thankful also for the privilege tonight to, to do our job as a gospel-preaching family of God, as the body of Christ, to recognize, to hear confessors, and to observe credible fruit in their lives so that we guard and protect and proclaim the gospel, even through this ordinance. We're thankful for those that, uh, who, who have grown up in families who have faithfully proclaimed the gospel to them, to their children. Really the front door of evangelism within their own family. Thank you for the many in our church family that have faithfully spoken the gospel to children over the years. 
in various settings. And thank you for those, even tonight, who didn't grow up hearing about Christ, but that in your kind providence, you brought them to a place where they would hear. And for each of them, your kindness in choosing them. Lord, not one of us in this room deserve your mercy. Not one of us deserve your grace. It's all out of your abundant love that you have chosen us to give hellbound sinners mercy and grace for the glory and praise of your name. And we're thankful also for the camp and even the opportunity even this weekend to, to go up there as a, as a youth group. And thank you for the junior hires that were able to join us and just be an encouragement to one another and to think that one another actually has its roots in who we are in Jesus, that we are held by your hand. You own us. You have saved us. And you've called us to walk worthy of the calling with which we've been called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with humility, bearing with one another, endeavoring with all effort to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. For this is a place of peace because of Jesus. So thank you for just the opportunity to be encouraged. And Lord, every time we are in a position of encouraging others, we are encouraged as well. So to be able to encourage by serving, but then to be encouraged by those who we were able to serve with, to be encouraged by uh, Willie and Dave and so thankful for the ministry of the camp and how it even serves our church family. The many throughout uh, even the wintertime and in the upcoming summer will be able to use those facilities and be encouraged through the teaching and preaching of the word. So thank you for your kindness to us and the opportunity to serve one another. In Jesus' name, amen. a little bit of time in Colossians here tonight. And so if you have your Bibles, we'll go to Colossians chapter one. And if you were not here last Sunday evening, uh, you'll need to get on the YouTube channel and uh, find the uh, uh, message and get the first two points uh, from uh, last Sunday evening. I think all of us have been in that situation, haven't we? Where you are in a room and you need to exit the room and you choose to leave the lights off and go ahead and make the This was several years ago. We were at our house, and the dog had entered into our room in the middle of the evening. And when he came into our room, the door propped open, oh, about six to eight inches. But with the lights completely out, I did not know that the door was open. And so in the middle of the evening, I needed to make a restroom visit. And, um, and so I did not want to wake my sweetheart. I did not want to turn on the lights and then make a big announcement. I'm going to the bathroom. Uh, so all I wanted to do is just get out of the room. And so I began to navigate through the room. You know where this is going, don't you? I began to navigate through the room in the dark and I went to go step through the door and um, I put my face, forehead, nose, and all the way down to my chest bone right into the side of the door, just clunk right into the side of the door. Now, I was not going 80 miles an hour. It wasn't an emergency restroom break, okay? Um, but it was in the middle of the night and dark and the hit startled me and um and i just i was just i was taken back as i ran into the door and uh, perhaps maybe a little bit angry at the dog but um but we've all experienced that uh, that kind of experience where we tried to navigate in the dark if you look at colossians chapter 1 paul brings out an amazing point here that i referenced this morning Spiritually speaking, we were in the kingdom of darkness. We were trying to navigate in spiritual darkness. We were finding our way around with all the bruises and all the injuries and everything that was taking place in spiritual darkness. But a transfer took place. A deliverance took place as we were delivered from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light or to the kingdom of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. 
uh, who experienced the greatest love from the Father. And so as we're continuing our series here, we're looking at being that complete in Christ. And uh, several of the other men are going to be preaching on Sunday evenings to come and continuing our study through the book of Colossians. And we're looking forward to those opportunities to be able to continue to look at Colossians. But we want to finish setting the plate of the first 14 verses here this evening um, and examine those first 14 verses. So we looked last week at verses 1 and 2 and Paul's greeting in the gospel of truth. That was kind of the theme of these first 14 verses. He references again there that the gospel of truth being what delivered the Colossians. And then we looked at the second point as well, verses 3 through 8, Paul's thanksgiving in the gospel of truth. And then tonight what we want to do here just for a moment is we want to park on this prayer that Paul delivers on behalf of the Colossians. And this was not the first time he prayed. He will tell us that here in a moment. But it's a prayer that's in accordance with the gospel of truth. And again, uh, Paul begins that prayer with a petition. It's verse number nine there. For this reason, since the day we heard of it, we do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and with all wisdom and spiritual understanding. It sounds a lot like that 1 Thessalonians 5, verse number 17, doesn't it? Pray without ceasing. Paul says, since I heard of your conversion, which Paul probably heard of that through Epaphras, he said, I began to pray for you. Now, I know I am not the only one on this one, where somebody has come to you and said to you, will you pray with me about that? And you make the promise and say, that's right, I will pray with you on that. And then perhaps maybe a couple weeks or a couple months later, they come to you and they say, you are not going to believe how God answered that prayer. I'm telling you, God was so faithful. Thank you so much for praying. And they go on to give a great testimony to God's faithfulness. And you have to gulp, don't you? You have to swallow hard. And sometimes you even have to admit it out loud and sit there and say, you know what? I told you I was going to pray. And I'm, I'm sorry, I, I did not pray like I should have. I'm gra- glad God has answered on your behalf. And glorified himself. But Paul says, look, since the day I heard of your conversion, I haven't stopped praying for you. I haven't stopped praying for you. I've been increasingly in prayer for you. And the results of that prayer are listed out in verses 10 and 11. What did Paul pray for? And his list was, it actually goes back into verse number nine as well. He prayed for them to be filled with the knowledge of God's will. Now, interestingly enough, he prays for the knowledge, and this would have been a word that the Colossians would have picked up on because of all the Greek philosophy of the area. Um, Some who were probably in the church who had converted to Christ out of uh, the kind of Greek philosophy mentality. That real knowledge, true knowledge, the knowledge of spiritual life is found in Christ and Christ alone. And that knowledge of God's will, that they would be in accordance to doing God's will, and that they would be filled with all wisdom. Again, that Greek word Sophia, uh, which is, uh, again, uh, right, ties itself right into that Greek philosoph- philosophy culture again, um, and that they would have what? Spiritual understanding, spiritual discernment. I think Hebrews chapter 5, verse number 14 shows us that spiritual maturity is marked by being able to make a decision between what is right and what is wrong. And so he is praying for that kind of spiritual discernment on their behalf as well. And what were the results that Paul was praying for? Well, he was praying for verse number 10 there and verse number 11, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might, in accordance to his glorious power, with all for all patience and long suffering with joy. And he actually goes on with some more of those truths and in beginning of verse number 12 that giving thanks to the father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints so thanks giving is part of that prayer as well but you caught it there in in that passage there first of all was a walk that was worthy you basically summarize that as being living a life that pleases god if you were here with us on wednesday night in our wednesday night study we talked about how it is impossible to please everyone it's impossible to really even please all of mankind but god says in second corinthians chapter 5 verse number 9 that we could actually make it our aim to be found well pleasing to him i even go back in my mind to ephesians or hebrews chapter 11 and 
Enoch, this man who walked with God and was raptured, and they went to go look for him, and they couldn't find him anymore. He left a testimony, and it was kind of an, an empty grave epitaph that they wrote on his tombstone. Well, not his pizza, for those of you who grew up in the 80s, but his gravestone. And this is what it said. It said in, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 6, that he pleased God. He pleased God. Reminds me again of the seminary student Dan and I had a chance to interact with at the Shepherds Conference there in California several years ago. Again, just, just a simple testimony of saying, look, I just want to be faithful to God. I want to be faithful to God's word. I want to be faithful to my wife. And I want to be forgotten. I want people to remember Christ. I'll make it my aim to please Christ. Secondly, there, little letter B there, that he wanted them to have a fruit-filled life. Of course, we've been seeing that out of John chapter 15, that we are to bear fruit in our lives. And he wanted their lives to be fruitful as well. He wanted them to experience what is called godly growth in their life. Stagnant believers is not the norm. In fact, it's actually not even really something that's applauded in Scripture. We're saved to be growing in our faith. Little letter D there. He wanted them to have a powerful strength in their life. And that powerful strength was not their strength in and of themselves, but strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. So how powerful is their Savior? How powerful is God? He's omnipotent, all-powerful, and that's the strength that was strengthening them. And then lastly there, little letter E there, he wanted them to have joyful endurance. Again, that they would have patience with long suffering and couple that with joy. We often don't see ourselves in times of needing patience or in times of needing long suffering that we see that as an element of joy in our life. But in Christ, that can be the capacity. And then Paul paints the most beautiful picture of the gospel here in verses 12 through 14. Because we find that the gospel truth is actually an inheritance. The gospel is not just something we receive and it's one and done and we forget it and go on from there. In fact, John actually said in John chapter 5 that we would continue to believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, and so this gospel is one actually becomes in turn our inheritance. Look at verse number 12 there. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in, watch this, light. That's going to be the comparison that he's going to make here in just a moment. The gospel truth is the inheritance. First of all, it is inheritance that's left from our heavenly father. The father here emphasizes the personal and relational aspect of our union with God. And the qualified aspect here, it means that it's to make us sufficient or empowered to or authorizes it to make it fit into what it comes to be by way of our life when we're in glory. Now we can just sit here in a moment and say, you know what? Well, I don't feel like I am qualified. <laughs> I don't feel like I am deserving or that I even deserve what this inheritance is. But that's why Christ went to the cross of Calvary. It's not that so we would be good enough to save ourselves. Christ went to Calvary so we could trust in his good gift that was given in the giving of himself on the cross of Calvary. And that becomes our inheritance. Our inheritance is Christ himself. The gospel of truth is embodied in the person of Christ himself. So it's eternal life with Christ and with the saints in light, okay? And that in light means it's in the presence of light. And so light is, at, is the aspect used to describe Christ himself in his presence for all of eternity. Our uh, Sunday school lesson in senior high Sunday school today was on the end of sin. And so we talked about when sin will be done away with forever, okay? Um, for all you Sandlot fans. Okay, all right? And we talked about how sin will one day be abolished, done, finished, because eternity will be with Christ and there will be an end to sin. There will be no more sin, no more death, no more dying, no more suffering. It's all captured in Christ and eternal life in Christ. And watch this, that inheritance builds first of all there by way of a transference. There's a transfer that takes place, verse number 13, and the uh, second part of verse number 13. Who Christ, who conveyed us, delivered us, first of all, from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of his son, the son of his love. And so we've been transferred. We've been taken out of the kingdom of darkness and placed into the kingdom of light. We've gone from darkness to light. 
and spiritual light took place when Christ took us out of that kingdom of darkness. Interestingly enough, he's already talked about being strengthened with all might uh, by his mighty power. And then we find out that we are actually under the power of darkness, but that dark power is broken in Christ. And so the transfer can take place from darkness to light. You say, Pastor Dave, I'm not sure my, my, my testimony shows a big darkness to light. Transfer. Um, you know, I, when I give my testimony, organs don't play in the background. And there's not like a commercial break that comes on. and do, 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 do. We'll be back to find out what happened to Bill, who was in a drug addict living in the alleys of Chicago before he went to Pacific Garden Mission. Okay, all right. And, and, you know, and some of you remember that, some of you don't. Okay, all right. Um, you listen to those unshackled stories and you're just like, man, I was, I, I, I didn't know if I did anything like that. And so I've had to help people come alongside them and say, you know what? It's not so much that you look back to see all the actions that God has necessarily saved you from. But actually what Christ has saved you from, what you would have been without Christ. Where would you have gone without Christ? What would you have been without Christ? And Christ saved us from our sins, past, present, and future. And the dead of sin is the dead of sin. Whether you were a drug addict in the streets and alleys of, of, of Chicago or whether you were, grew up in a Christian home and you recognize that if you did not have Christ, you were not going to spend eternity with him. It doesn't matter. The debt of sin was paid by Christ. And so we're transferred in Christ out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And that is all based on his glorious pardon that he has made for sin. If you want the key verse of verses 1 through 14, are you ready for it? Don't you love Paul? He puts the key verse of this section at the end. The key verse is verse number 14. In whom, in him, in Christ, we have redemption bought off of the slave market of sin and set free. That's what redemption is. Through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Now, we're not trying to be morbid when we talk about the blood of Jesus Christ, but without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. There is no forgiveness of sins. And so redemption's price had been paid by Christ's shed blood. And Christ's blood was holy and perfect and, and satisfying to the Father, equating much far, far better, as Hebrews says, than all of the lamb sacrifices of the Old Testament, sufficient to appease God's wrath against sin, for those who would trust Christ and God's wrath is propitiated and our redemption in that we are set free comes through Christ and Christ alone. Redemption comes through him. Now he's going to build on that in verses to come here and he's going to kind of use that as a platform to go into more what he wants to communicate to the uh, Corinthians or with, to the Colossians, sorry, not the Corinthians. But what he's trying to tell us here is that transference was taken place because of Christ, not because of anything that we've done. And how far has God removed our sins? Remember Micah chapter 7, verse number 19? You remember that one? He will again have compassion on us and subdue our iniquities and cast our sins into the depths of the sea. He's, a, he's, he's, he's taken care of the entire debt of sin. That's why a complete transference can take place out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And that's why we can have hope in the gospel of truth. That's why we can have hope in Christ. That's why we can, if you got all the way down to chapter 1, verse number 21, 28. That's why we preach Christ, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ. Not perfect in ourselves. Not perfect in our church, not perfect in our membership, not perfect in our, in, our, in our homes, but perfect in Christ, complete in Christ. May God keep us in that and continue to encourage us in those things, even in these days to come. Father, thank you again for these truths. Help us to live for them, not just as something that took place in the past, but live for them in the present, recognizing, Lord, that you have made a complete transfer in our lives out of the kingdom of darkness and to the kingdom of light, the kingdom of your son. And God, that all took place because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And perhaps maybe there's somebody here tonight who doesn't know you as Savior, and tonight would be the night of salvation. And perhaps maybe there's someone here tonight who has, knows Christ as Savior, but knows they have not been living for Christ. They've still been trying to live in the kingdom of darkness, and, and they need to make that reality and let that reality take place in their life where they live in the kingdom of his son, in the kingdom of light. 
And so, Lord, we thank you for what Christ has done for us. Thank you for the reminders that Paul gives us here of being complete in him. And, Lord, we're thankful for Christ tonight. The example that's been put in front of us, the opportunity we've had to see these young people walk through the waters of believers' baptism, and the opportunity we've had to just rejoice in what Christ has done for us. And we thank you for this in Christ's name. Amen. Do we have a song in here? Okay, let's go ahead and sing, and then we will move to our members' meeting if we can, okay? Just a hand there. Please stand with me. As our members meeting tonight is simply uh, members of First Baptist Church receiving uh, individuals into membership. Uh, if, you, if you're a non-member and you wish to slip out, you sure may, but we aren't covering anything here tonight that would uh, be distracting to you remaining if you wish to remain with us here this evening. Uh, I'd like to go ahead and start our members meeting if I can in a short word of prayer, and then we'll go ahead and walk through the process of receiving these individuals into our membership here tonight. Thank you, Father, again, for the opportunity we've had to uh, not only see these things on display tonight, but to re- the opportunity to rejoice in the gospel. And I pray that you would lead us in this time of, of being able to consider these individuals and, and walk through these things uh, here tonight in a way that honors and glorifies you. And we thank you for this in Christ's name. Amen. So we see in the New Testament a pattern, a pattern of what membership is. And really, um, you could add a whole lot of things to the list, but really when you look at the New Testament, it's a testimony of salvation, believer's baptism, and agreement. You have, the, you have those, those three things. And again, those that gladly received the word, Acts chapter 2, verse 41, those who had trusted Christ were baptized and they were added to the church. They were added to the membership. And so that's the pattern we want to follow here tonight as well. And so, first of all, I'll take uh, Jacob Hemsworth there, based on his credible testimony of conversion to Christ, and sharing his testimony as to have been having followed Christ, Lord, the Lord's command and believer's baptism. Uh, would there be a motion then to receive Jacob Hemsworth into our membership and fellowship here at First Baptist Church? Blake Lawfer giving the first, and then Alex Gates and Todd Daly uh, giving the second there. Any questions? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Pose same sign, and that carries. Then we'll take uh, Wesley Wires here up for consideration uh, based on his credible testimony of the gospel. And having followed the Lord in believer's baptism, would there be a motion then to receive Wesley Wires into our membership and fellowship here at First Baptist Church? I uh, see Wayne Miller giving the first there, and Mary Ellen Wires noting herself as the second as church clerk on the, the minutes there. Any questions there for Wesley? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. And that carries. And then based on her credible testimony of conversion to Christ and having followed the Lord's command to be baptized, would there be a motion then to receive uh, Haley Lawfer into our membership and fellowship here at First Baptist Church? Jeannie Saylor giving the first, Hannah Miller giving the second with Vanessa Miller as well. Any questions? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. And that carries. 
And then based on her credible testimony of the gospel and following the Lord in believer's baptism, would there be a motion then to receive Olivia Miller into our membership and fellowship here at First Baptist Church? Tone Gates giving the first there, Diane Carr and Amanda Stanley uh, giving the second there. I saw you there, Dan Dahl, too. Yep, yep, that's okay. Um, uh, giving the second there. Any questions there? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. And that carries. And then based on his credible testimony of conversion to Christ and having followed the Lord in uh, believer's baptism, would there be a motion then to receive Gabe Lawfer into our membership and fellowship here at First Baptist Church? Deb Buchanan giving the first there. Dan Dahl giving the second. Any questions there? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. And that carries. And then based on uh, his credible testimony of the gospel of Jesus Christ and having followed the Lord's commandment to be baptized, would there be a motion then to receive Tyler Travis into our membership and fellowship here at First Baptist Church? I see Clint Travis and then Bruce Travis giving the second. I saw another hand over here. That was Blake Lawfer. Thank you. Any questions there? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. And that carries. And then again, last but not least, uh, based on her credible testimony of conversion to Christ and having followed the Lord in believer's baptism, would there be a motion to receive Aaliyah Bowles into our membership and fellowship here at First Baptist Church? See Vanessa Miller giving the first there, and then Jamie Saylor, and then uh, Jeannie Saylor giving the second. All in favor? Any questions? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. And that carries. Why don't we go ahead and stand here. Luke, if you can switch it back to my PowerPoint for my message there. We're going to stand and we're going to read our church covenant as we finish tonight. And I think if I get here going here. Again, when we read this together. It's at the end of my message. Is it not there? It is not there. I think I pulled over the wrong one. Um, take your covenant home and uh, pull it out tonight uh, because we're not going to be able to read it without it on the screen there. Sorry about that. It, it's that, is that the new one? That's the old one. Sorry. No harm, no foul. Okay. All right. Um, that's all right. Uh, uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a moment to dismiss uh, those who um, have uh, been received into our membership uh, to the foyer there so we can uh, greet you and and uh, thank the Lord for your testimonies here tonight. Jacob, that does include you as well. Uh, spouses and parents, if you'd like to go as well, you sure may. Um, and, uh, and that'd be just fine. And let's go ahead and have a word of prayer and then we'll be adjourned. Father, thank you again for the opportunity to be together tonight. Thank you for the opportunity to, to follow you um, in your commands, even here this evening through the ordinance of baptism. And I pray you bless these young people um, as they have become a part of us. And we look forward to uh, next week hearing from Clay Kiefer. And uh, we look forward to uh, a whole another group of young people that are going to be taking the baptism class here. um, And uh, look forward to that opportunity of rejoicing with them. Thank you again for your great grace. Carry us in it even this week. Um, And for those believers who are leaning uh, heavily upon you for your grace and your mercy to help them in their time of need, we just pause to ask once again that you'd watch over them. And we thank you for this in Christ's name. Amen. You are dismissed.